In Revelation 22, 7, Jesus said, Behold, I am returning quickly, and my reward is with me. And in John 14, 1, Jesus said, I'm going away. And if I go away, I am going to come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. And the Bible has given us a lot of signs on what the last days would be like. Today, we want to look at those signs on Hot Topics. Hi, this is Robert Furrow. Welcome to Hot Topics. We're really glad that you found us. Consider subscribing and ringing the bell. And the comment section is open below. We'd love to hear from you. Jesus said in the book of Luke that you know how to discern the weather, but you have no idea on how to discern the times. We want to make sure that we take a look at what the Bible says and discern the times that we're living in. Today, we want to look at seven things the Bible says about what the last days are going to be like. Number one, in the book of Daniel, it says that knowledge will increase. Daniel had been given his prophecy, and he wanted to know what it was all about. In fact, he asked, and he was told not to worry about it, but to seal it up until the time of the end when men would go to and fro on the earth and knowledge would increase. That's Daniel 12, 4. We see that in our day, men are moving back and forth on the earth to a greater extent than ever before. Knowledge pretty much grew at a steady rate until we came to the late 1800s and then there was a jump. And in the late 1900s with the computer era, there was another jump and knowledge is increasing at such a rate now, it is absolutely amazing. If the book of Daniel was to be sealed until the time of the end when men moved to and fro and knowledge increased, we are certainly living in those days. Number two, Paul told us in 2 Timothy that perilous times would come. That means dangerous times. Listen to what he said. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3. And although I believe that these characteristics could be applied to almost every culture, our culture has them in abundance. And it tells us again that we are living in those perilous times when men are how they are described in 2 Timothy chapter 3. The third we find all throughout the Old Testament, and that is that the people of Israel will be regathered in the land of Israel. There are several different passages we could go to, but one that interests me the most is Isaiah 11, 11 and 12. It says, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set out his hand a second time and recover the remnant of his people who are left. That second time in that verse is very important. The first time, they're pushed out of Israel and into Babylon, and they're dispersed around the world. Then they are regathered back into Israel. And then after the time of Jesus, Jerusalem is destroyed by Titus, the son of Vespasian, the emperor, and they are dispersed throughout the world one more time. So they have two times that they were dispersed. And God says, I will reach out my hand a second time, and I will bring them back. And he gives us a list of places. He says, Assyria, Egypt, Cush, Shinar, and the islands of the sea, just to give some examples. But then he says in verse 12, he will set up a banner for the nations. What an idea that God's going to take Israel, bring them back into the land, reestablish their land. The Bible not only says that the people will return, but fruitfulness will return to the nation. Military power will return to the nation. Israel is a banner to the world today of a nation that did not exist before 1948. From 70 AD, when they were taken captive by the Romans, until 1948, they did not exist. And the Bible says the people, the land, the language would all be restored, and they stand as a banner to the world. And then it says and will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. God has done that during our lifetime. Israel became a nation in 1948 with hundreds of thousands of people, but today there are around 6 million that live in the nation of Israel. Number four, 
Jesus said that Jerusalem would be returned to Israeli control once again. Listen to what he says in Luke 21, 24. And they will fall by the edge of the sword. He's talking about the destruction of Rome in 70 AD. And he says, and they will be led captive into all the nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. This is a prophecy by Jesus. 40 years later, Rome took control. The children of Israel were dispersed and Jerusalem was trampled underfoot until 1967. They became a nation in 1948, but during the war of 67, they regained Jerusalem. Technically, the time of the Gentiles was done. The only piece of property that they don't control is the Temple Mount, and maybe we're waiting for that Temple Mount to go back under Israeli control. The Bible says that one day there will be another temple, a future temple built on top of that Temple Mount. There are so many amazing aspects to this, the trampling of Jerusalem by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, because God will one day work again with the nation of Israel in the 70th week of Daniel, or the seven-year tribulation period of the book of Revelation. The fifth is that there will be a rise in false teachers. It says in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith and giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. When Jesus was asked about the last days, he says, Take heed to yourselves that you are not deceived. There are so many ways in which we can be deceived, and we have to be careful as Christians that we are not deceived. And living in the last days, there are all these false teachers that are out there, and we have the responsibility to know that we are believing, following, trusting, and doing what is the truth. The sixth thing it says about what the end of the world would be like is that disasters and wars will become more and more common. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 24, 3 through 8. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? Jesus had prophesied the destruction of the temple earlier. And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? So they want to know when will Jerusalem be destroyed and what's going to be the sign at the end of the age. The same kind of things that we wanted to know. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. These deceptions will be effective. But then he said, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass and the end is not yet. He's saying that during the time of history, there was going to be wars and rumors of wars. And don't be disturbed because those things are going to happen. Then he says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows or quite literally the beginning of birth pains. In other words, throughout all of history, there will be wars and famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. But as we get near the end, they will become more and more frequent. The world will seem more and more out of control. It'll seem more crazy. Sound familiar to anyone? We're seeing an increase in all of these things in the days that we are living, and they should tell us that we are living in the last days. The seventh thing that I find that the Bible identifies as us living in the last days is that the gospel will be preached around the world. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 13 and 14. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all of the world as a witness to the nation, and then the end will come. I'm not sure that what's happening today qualifies as the gospel being preached all around the world but I can tell you that it is close. We have brought the gospel everywhere we could possibly think of, and I believe the day will come when this is absolutely completed. The real sign for us living in the last days is the gospel being preached around the world. And if that is true, and all of these things have come to pass, let me summarize them again. Knowledge will increase, perilous times will come, the people of Israel will be regathered in Israel. Jerusalem will be under Israeli control again. There will be a rise of false teachers. Disasters will become more frequent. The gospel will be preached around the world. 
And if that is the world that we're living in, then look up. Jesus said, watch and be ready. Are you ready if Jesus were to return today? Are you faithfully doing the work that he has called us to do? If you and I have been given the privilege to be alive during the last days, then we wanna be as faithful as we can. In fact, we would wanna be as faithful as we could in whatever days we are given to live in. But I believe that we can discern the times by looking at what the Bible says, some of them absolutely amazing, and then seeing that they would come true. How would Jesus know that the gospel would be preached around the world unless he was giving it as a prophecy? I hope this video has helped you. If you like it, click the like button. That really helps to get this information out. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.